Welcome to our third pre-season episode of Supercoach Edge for season 2022. My name's Damon and I'm joined by my co-host Liam, as always. Now we've come to the end of our pre-season matches, Liam, but the study is just ramping up as we surge towards round one. Yes, yes. I've had some uh, late night cramming sessions just uh, trying to figure out how to best use my uh, my salary cap and I just... I'm really proud of this. I literally have zero dollars in the bank currently. Please, sir. I want some more. I've used See, it is. in full. Um, I don't know if it's the best bet at this stage, but uh, <laughs> but uh, let's just hope that we uh, wake from the the living nightmare that is the rookie crisis soon. Gee whiz. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Speaking of the rookie crisis, we'll we'll touch on that um, a little we bit will. later in the episode. Yeah. But yeah, it is definitely a nightmare. I've been I've been waking up in a cold sweat most nights. <laughs> Just, just thinking mm. of like how much money I'm having to fork out for these rookies because there's no bottom price rookies and um, it's at the stage now where I've reconfigured my team. Much like yourself, Liam, where you got zero dollars left, I've got a, a few pennies left, but oh, I nice. need some extra pennies to try and get in a yeah. couple of those those uh, more expensive rookies. So um, I don't know how we're going to do it, but uh, hopefully uh, our analysis uh, on today's episode as well as, as last week will uh, help out you guys out there but um before we get into the need gritty um where can the good folk of the supercoach edge community find us yes on youtube you can search supercoach edge and don't forget to like and whatever on twitter search at supercoach underscore edge uh you'll find david at, at demo j88 myself at, at liam evans underscore 95 on Facebook and on Instagram, just search Supercoach Edge and you'll find us there. Let's kick off uh, with our first segment today, Liam. And last week, what do we call it? It was the the watch list. Mm. This week, we're becoming a little bit more certain. We're trying to confine as to how many players yes. we can choose from. So uh, we're sort of picking out those players that, uh, that really caught our eye over the past couple of weeks. And it is called the Team Sheet. Mattingly! I thought I told you to trim those sideburns. Go home. You're off the team for good. Yes, in the team sheet, we'll uh, run through the key players to consider for your side across each section of the field based on past reliability and recent scoring form shown across the last two practice games. Uh, We'll break it down into the locks, so players who should be an automatic selection. Uh, On the radar, players who have caught the eye and in good consideration. Uh, they'll have a couple of out of the box. So a few left field POD players uh, who you could consider and no, God, please. No, is <laughs> we wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. So now that's out of the way, let's get straight into the defensive line. Probably goes without saying who uh, these group of guys are. And they rounded up by uh, one, two, three, four guys uh, with names starting with J. And uh, there's a guy who stuffed it up completely whose name starts mm, with T. So come on. not good enough. Not good enough. Um, but those guys, uh, the Seagull, Jake Lloyd, Jack Crisp, Jordan Ridley, Jaden Short, and the black sheep of the crew, Tom Stewart. Just because, <laughs> Can you change the name to like Josh Stewart Jom, or something? John Stewart. <laughs> Jom, Jom Stewart. <laughs> uh, Jom Stewart. JS, Job Security. Um, but uh, yeah, they, these group of guys are obviously, you know, you pick two of these guys for either your D1 or your D2 spots. And I think no matter who you select, they're all going to serve you quite well. Yeah. Obviously your job security, reliability, consistency of scoring, um, relatively high ceiling, high floor. So those are the sort of guys that um, you really want to pick from, obviously. Um, and I think for me, of those guys, um, I've at the moment, and I think I don't think I'll change it, but I've narrowed it down to Lloyd mm. slash Crisp for D1. At the moment, I've actually changed from Lloyd to Crisp. Because as you were saying earlier, I need a little bit more money. Mm. Um, and then for D2, uh, I used to be Ridley and I've changed it to short. So I'm kind of like to and froing between those two. But what about yourself? Yeah, I um, I personally have gone off Jake Lloyd a little bit. I think I think he's someone that I'd probably be looking to, to target later. So for that D1 spot, it's sort of between Stewart and Crisp. At this stage, I have also opted for Crisp uh, for that little bit of extra cash. And then... <sighs> Either probably Ridley or Short for that D2 spot. But in my team, I've got Ridley and Short in D2 and D3. So, um, yeah, so I, I'm a big fan of both of them. I think Jaden Short um, without Hooley um, sort of looks a bit like um, he's going to be this new, the new Seagull. Mm, and yep. Jordan Ridley, I mean, I wish we had seen him with Jake Kelly in the side properly in a proper scoring match. But I think he's, I mean, he's got 99 on the weekend without him. I think he's going to go 
um, much better when he is in the side because he's just going to be able to play a lot more freely. And he took, I think, 50% of the kick-ins, which is nice to see. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All valid points as well. And yeah, it's definitely hard. I mean, having only two, one official um, practice game yeah. to really assess form is quite hard. So, um, I mean, everyone's in the same boat, but uh, yeah, those are the sort of guys that you should be narrowing down to mm. for those first two points in defense. But uh, Liam, we've also tried to pencil in locks in defense on the rookie front. Uh, are there any? The outset. <laughs> yeah, there are very, very few to turn to. Um, and it's it's probably a little bit harder to do in defense, especially um, compared mm. to the other uh, parts of your side, um, as it's yeah one position that's, that's definitely lacking for quality. But uh, we've listed the most solid options for the fact that uh, they tick three main boxes. And they are job security, scoring ability, and cash cow potential. And mind you, this could all be thrown awry if they somehow yeah. aren't selected in round one. But uh, there's a couple of guys here that we are relatively confident should tick all those boxes and get a debut in round one. But Who's let's be honest. One, uh, let's be honest. This first one with his the coach that uh, his coach oh, yeah. he could be thrown awry with us. M. De Conning. Uh, he's priced 123.9k. He's defense and forward eligible, so got some handy DPP there. And he's sort of long been earmarked to step up um, for this season. And I think we, a few of us sort of went off him after his uh, his uh, unofficial preseason game. Uh, but he did show he belonged at senior level in the practice game against the Suns, uh, where he gathered 19 disposals and took five bucks for a, for a very decent score of 92 super coach points, uh, which is super solid showing and exactly what you'd be wanting to see from a well, more than what you'd be wanting to see from a from a rookie, especially in the defensive line. Uh, he does obviously have that um, DPP status, so the defense and forward eligibility, um, which is super important. I just think as a youngster, we can't really expect him to maintain that 92 super coach point average. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think we'll be seeing that too early, too, too consistently or too often. Um, I also think he's probably going to end up playing a bit more lockdown-y roles, which aren't mm-hmm. going to be super conducive to his scoring. But I think the early signs are that he'll be given at least an opportunity and he should make us some cash. I think at 123K, he doesn't need to average massively um, to make us 150K. So I think if he's named, we need some warm bodies and he's going to be one of them. Yeah. I I like how you said there as well that early signs that he's going to be given an opportunity. But like you mentioned from the top there, and I completely forgot, like as I was like doing a bit of research on on Mr. DeConning, I completely forgot who his coach was. And when you mentioned his name, Mm. I had that instant reaction uh, where, you know, doctor, you know, the gift of Dr. Phil, where he's just like, <laughs> that, that was me. <laughs> oh, I was like flashbacks to last season. Yeah. Far out. Yeah. Scott. Gee whiz. He's, um, and I, I went into the season saying like, oh, I'm going to be, you know, not selecting any Geelong players because of Scott and I won't have to deal with him, but, uh, no, I'm going to have to deal with him in the form of DeConning. Mm. Sorry, mate. Sorry. But, um, but yeah, you can't overlook DeConning, I think from what you've just nah. said there. Absolutely. Second player, of course, is Paddy McCartan. A lot of people have him in their teams and rightfully so. He's priced at 157.8K and he is selectable as a defender slash forward. And, uh, you know, I guess if you uh, like to have DeConning or Paddy McCartan mm. up forward, uh, you'd be able to um, do a bit of a swing between both of these guys quite handy. Switcheroo. Yeah, nice little switcheroo. And he, he has looked like he's belonged playing defense for the Swans across both practice matches. And most recently on the weekend where he uh, he gathered 14 disposals and seven marks to finish with 74 super coach points. So obviously no doubting his ability, former number one draft pick. Uh, but obviously the, uh, the big question mark is around his durability. But uh, with back-to-back solid performances, you'd probably say with confidence now that he's played his way into the Swans mm. best 22, which we, uh, we definitely questioned last week. And the DPP eligibility, uh, which I just spoke of, gives him that extra tick in our books. And if he can maintain his current scoreline across the season as an average, uh, he's going to make us a fair bit of coin, which is going to yeah. be uh, really handy. Yeah, definitely. I, I've i got him in as well. I think, look, the rookies in the back line are, are, are sparse, to be perfectly honest. Mm-hmm. And I think you're going to have to be paying a premium. And it's going to go across all lines to an extent. Um, yeah. We're going to have to pay to at least get some playing rookies this year. Um, but let's move on now to on the radar. So first up on the radar, we've got Lockie Whitfield, who is uh, defensive and midfield eligible, uh, 502.6K. And the only reason that I've got him in on the radar and not as a lock is mm. just his injury history. He's yep. very, very good value and does come off a score of 96 off about 82% of time on ground. He most likely makes his way into my side, I think, at this yep. stage. 
Yep. Hopefully. <laughs> It'll free up some cash, which would be nice, but downgrade a Ridley or a, a short twin. Yeah, but I, I just, I can't get rid of that, that nagging feeling in the back of my head that something's going to go wrong. Something's going to go awry. He's going to get injured and it's going to be all for naught. <laughs> Yeah, no, I totally feel you. It's it's one of those things, isn't it, where you're just expecting it to happen at some stage. Uh, it's very much like, I'm not going to put him in the same sort of sentence as a Nat Fife, even though I just no. did. But, I mean, he's kind of like, he has that history uh, across the journey where he does pick up an eagle, whether it's in the, the short term of the season, the middle or the end. It's going to happen mm. at some point. It's just a matter of when. But I think the fact that um, he's actually in... Um, a vast majority of sides at the moment. I had a look at these, uh, uh, how many coaches have selected him. And he's in 47% of sides at the moment. So that kind of negates any real yeah. risk, which is good. But um, yeah, like you mentioned, uh, injury history, big worry. Um, for me, I'm selecting him just off the back of the fact that if you don't select him and obviously 47% have, you're going to sort of fall, fall behind the, the eight ball if he does come out firing in round one of the early rounds. Um, and I think in terms of when we talk about genuine bargains, Whitfield is probably among yeah. the top for me. I think I, I, going into the season, I would have thought that, you know, when Supercoach opened, I thought he would have been around about the 540 mark or thereabouts, um, especially based upon last season as well, his starting price. Um, but to get the, you know, the, the price he is at the moment around about that 500k mark is, uh, is awesome. So yeah, bit of, bit of a, um, a question mark, but yeah, for me, he's in at the moment. Yeah, no, fair enough. We'll move on to the next bloke on the list, and that's George Hewitt from Your Mob, uh, also mid and defensive eligible at 399k. Um, as we discussed last week, he could be a pretty good mid-priced option. He scored 106 on the weekend, and I think he'll have a pretty good midfield role until Walsh comes back. After mm-hmm. that, it comes becomes a little bit more questionable, but I think he's shown enough to say that he should um, should maintain a decent enough role um, and could be super good value until then. Um, and just you know, a good scoring option for his price tag. Um, I think as well, we've seen him average in that sort of 90 region, I think last year. Mm. Um, so I think, I think at his price, it's, it's not out of the question that he's going to at least make some cash um, to begin with and just sort of be another warm body. I think the discount that you get from him on someone like a James Sicily also means that it's easier to upgrade some rookies somewhere else. Um Mm. Or not necessarily upgrade rookies, but just sort of find the find some extra playing, some find some extra cash somewhere else, which is obviously yeah. Good. I think it, like we spoke of earlier as well, like in terms of the rookies that are available, all the half decent ones are all around about that one fifty mark yeah. upwards. Mm. So for me, I, I, I'm trying to find an extra bit of extra cash to try and fit in hinge, um, which I, I can't at the moment. And my only way to do it would be to downgrade, like you said, uh, a Sicily to a Hewitt, and it's something that I'm I'm definitely thinking of doing. Um, and, and just, just with him as well, let me just have a quick look, um, in terms of CBAs and you spoke of there when Walsh returns, he may take a bit of a hit in terms of his scoring, but also CBAs and on the weekend uh, against the D's Hewitt actually had 25 CBAs, mm, okay. um, five more than Adam Chera who had 20 and, uh, Kennedy, which he was switching between forward and uh, midfield. He had 17. So I think he probably will take a little bit of a hit. He might be in more rotations, maybe playing more so on the wing as opposed to in yeah. the engine room. But I think he still has that ability, like you said, to, to really score well enough. Um, so for me, and I saw him firsthand, obviously being a, being a baggers man, saw him live and really impressed me in terms of his foot foot skills. Um, and he was playing as a genuine you know, ball getter. He, he was off, yeah. off the leash, wasn't a, a tagger in any sense of the world, in any sense of the word. And for me, uh, I think I'm, I'm sort of talking myself into getting him at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so I might down, downgrade Sicily to, uh, to Hewitt. But um, speaking of Sicily, uh, mm-hmm. he is the next man up uh, and he's priced at 448.1K. So yeah, close to 50K he will net you if you downgrade Sicily to Hewitt. But uh, in his own right, uh, Sicily scored 87 against the Tigers off 17 disposals and five marks. Um, I don't know about yourself, Liam, but I, I just spoke of him then in terms of potentially maybe downgrading him. I've been yeah. pretty, uh, I wouldn't say happy. I've been satisfied with Sicily. I think the way that he's yeah. been playing um, and scoring, but I'd like to see a bit more of a ceiling that we saw mm-hmm. um, before he obviously did his uh, did his knee, uh, which I haven't seen just yet. So that's kind of, Give me a bit of the heebie-jeebies um, when it comes to Sicily yeah, and and making me think twice about him. What, what do you reckon? Yeah, I've gone off him a little bit. I think if you'd asked me 
a couple of weeks ago, I would have said he was a lock because he's just at such a discount. But we haven't really seen him play with the likes of Jayath, Impy, mm. Day in the side. I mean, I know Day is um, yep. is injured, but he's going to come back eventually, you'd think. Mm. Um, he did play that bit more of that traditional lockdown role. Um, managed to score pretty decently with an 87, but I just don't know if he's going to score enough to be a top six to eight defender. And yep. at his price point, that's what you're expecting from him. Um, mm. You're expecting to keep him. I'm just not sold. And I think with the likes of, you know, Pendlebury and um, McGrath potentially even, and dare I say it, McGrath, uh, Merritt's been playing in, in the back line as well as a halfback. Um, they could all get DPP status. And then I just think it just knocks him out of that park of being that top six to eight defender. So I'm not sold. And for the price difference, I just think Hewitt's probably going to be a better pick. I think he'll probably outscore Sicily. Um, and you're getting, you know, 50 odd K, um, to, to use somewhere else. Yeah. And that's the thing as well. Like, um, I'm not too sure if, if those of you out there who are tuning in, listening or watching us on YouTube, but, uh, one of the contributors on Twitter, Supercoach IQ actually went through and he actually did a bit of a breakdown as to how many points per game, uh, they need to average in order to mm. make a bit of cash. Um, not that you'll, you know, I don't think Sicily by any sense of the word is actually going to average, enough to uh, to make 150k and if he, if he was then you're going to keep him but just just for a bit of context like for anyone that's that's priced at 400k needs to average um uh, 114 points to make 150 150k and at the moment the 400k mark equates to 79 points per game on average so if he drops below 79 points on average he's actually going to lose money yeah um so you've actually got to factor that in as well if you're using sicily as a stepping zone which we've mentioned in the past um, you know, you've got to factor that in as well. Um, and same with, I guess, uh, Hewitt as well. Yeah, Hewitt would um, be again, exactly the same. Again, you know, he's at the 400K mark. So same sort of thing. Um, he needs to average above 79 points to actually get a, a positive increase in his uh, in his price rises. And I think just based off the fact that we did see him do that last year in that 90 region mm. um, with Hewitt, I think that kind of negates that. I think there's yep. less risk with Hewitt than with Sicily. And I think the extra yeah. 50K just gives you um, a bit more, you know, leeway somewhere else across the field as well. Yeah. Um, but moving on to out of the box. So this is a, this is a bit of a pod option mm. um, that I've sort of been pondering. I, like um, I don't think he's going to make his way into my side, but uh, Heath <laughs> Chapman, a mid pricer that we are, uh, we'd all remember from, from yesteryear, uh, 275.2 K. Um, he managed to score of 86 on the weekend. He's slightly pricier than sort of the rookies, um, but, and sort of is a bit of an awkward price, mm-hmm. but you could definitely see him scoring around that, you know, 70 to 80, 85, even range. Um, the only concern for me with him, I think he's a good option, but I think the main concern is that long, uh, long Muir said post-match, um, was that because he has this ability to sort of play tall and small, he'll play in a few different roles. Um, and I think that could mean we see a bit of a fluctuation in the scoring, depending on the needs of the Dockers. So, I mean, it's sort of a risky option. I don't mind mm. it. I don't mind some risky options sometimes, but um, he sort <laughs> of sits at, a, at, a, at an awkward price point. And I don't know, with the lack of rookies and other sort of 200K, if, there was, if he was a forward, I'd say yeah. go for it because there's a lot of other, as we'll get to a lot of other options around that, you know, 250K mark mm. where you could easily make a corrective trade if it, if it doesn't work out in the first couple of weeks. Yeah, for me, I mean, when you suggested him, I was like, "Gee whiz, what's he actually scored?" Because I didn't didn't actually pay attention to him uh, across the uh, the preseason uh, games. But uh, yeah, I mean, surprising to see that he's actually scored as well as he has. He's, I mean, he's been in the system for a little bit now, um, and you know, it's, it's not you know uh, out of the uh, out of the question that he actually could score better than he has in the past. But uh, yeah, for me, I think, as you said, he's at the awkward price point. So for me, not going to factor in. But uh, let's move on to uh, the two guys that uh, fall into the no, God, please, no category. And it is uh, Aaron Hall, uh, who obviously recently injured his hamstring and uh, will be out for the early rounds of the season. Don't know when he will be back just yet because I haven't seen any updates from North Melbourne just yet, but um, obviously shouldn't be in your considerations. Uh, and if he is in your team by some, I was going to say stroke of genius, but, but no, it's not stroke of genius. It's uh, a stroke of misfortune. Uh, you definitely want to get him out of your side. And then the other player, uh, which uh, a lot of people wouldn't have heard about this, but uh, Braden Maynard, 
because I know he has been in some people's teams, as I've seen on Twitter. Uh, it's now been confirmed tonight that uh, he's due to miss the first two weeks of the season through suspension. Um, so for those of you who do have him in their teams, get him out of there. <laughs> yeah. But let's move on, Liam, to, uh, to the midfield. This is a yep. juicy part, isn't it? This is a juicy part. Let's move on to the locks. And like the back line, we sort of selected four blokes who are, you can take your pick of any of these. You pretty much won't go wrong with any of them if you're sitting with them with your me, M1 to M3 sort of positions at a minimum. Uh, so they are Jack McRae, Jack Steele, Tuk, Tuk Miller, uh, and Clayton Oliver. Tuk Tuk. Tuk Tuk. These guys are just, you know, you're out and out premiums. Um, I think I'd be wanting to start three of them. I think I've got three of them in my side. I'd love to start four. Um, <laughs> of those three, I've gone with the most expensive. I've gone Jack McRae, Jack Steele, and Tuk Miller, um, which I'm excited to start Tuk Miller this year. Oh yeah, he's he's. I'm calling. I don't know if other people call him this, but he's the running man. You you watch Gold mm. Coast, and literally, he's every time you see him, he is not flat footed. He is just running flat out. He's just absolutely insane. He's one of the most fittest guys in the AFL, I reckon. He's just an absolute gun, and for that reason, he's just. I think he's got that endurance base where he can just play all day, and uh, obviously on the ground more means uh, more opportunity for points. So I'm trying desperately to to get that extra five five k to upgrade Oliver to him um, because, yeah, it's, uh, he's well worth it. But uh, just speaking of locks, also in the locks in terms of the uh, the rookie front, um, obviously, again, if they tick the three main boxes of job security, scoring ability, and cash cow potential, uh, these are the sort of guys that we're looking at uh, because it's quite hard to lock in rookies at this stage uh, of the year in preseason. But obviously, you could probably guess who they are. The two guys, uh, <laughs> high draft picks, Jason Horn Francis, uh, he priced at 207.3K. Mm-hmm. Scored 83 and 87 across the preseason and looks like a solid selection for your midfield as a rookie. And very much like Raul and Walsh before him, this number one pick, absolutely going to explode, Liam. Absolutely yeah, I think he explode. will. Uh, next I think guy is... Oh, yeah, sorry, I think ahead. so, just quickly. I think even though he looks like he's going to spend some time as a, as a forward... Um, he looks like he's still going to score well in that role. Mm. I think he he scored two two off memory, yeah, um, he did. and so I just think he's he's worth the pick. I wouldn't be too scared off by the fact that he's going to be playing forward as well. Um, and I think just with the lack of other rookies that we can choose, we have to pay for ones that we know are going to have that job security right now. Yeah, that's literally. I think in terms of ticking th- three of those boxes, I think that's the that's the main thing at the moment, just because there's too few rookies to to choose from. So. Um, it's just lucky the fact that they tick all three of those boxes there. Um, but the other guy, obviously Nick Dacos, 193.8K, scored 100 on the dot against the Giants and topped the disposals, believe it or not, for the Pies with 31. So um, I guess, yeah, don't don't pick him at your peril because everyone's going to have him. I think he's, at last check, I think he was 74% owned, the most owned player mm. in Supercoach. So uh, you'd be silly to go against the grain because yeah, no, you're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt. So don't be silly. Lock him into your side. Yeah, definitely. Now let's move on to on the radar. Uh, Lockie, Whit- Lockie Neal, sorry, Lockie Neal starts as our first on the radar at 543.2K, midfield eligible, obviously. And I'm going to say he's only on this part of the list because of some of the other options that I guess he's now competing for a spot against. Um, but to be honest, he looks like a lock in my side at M4 at a minimum. And he's, he's definitely locked into my side. Uh, he scored 112 against the Dogs, kicked 1-1. Um, we've already spoken about how underpriced he is this season, and I think he'll be back to his absolute best. <laughs> we should see him easily beating his hundred average from last year. That's all he that's all he averaged last year. So yeah. I think we'll be he'll be getting up to that hopefully one fifteen average that we are one fifteen, maybe one twenty. Get him back into a brown low form and one twenty four <laughs> or one thirty average. I can't remember what it was, but you've you've read my mind there, Liam. I was literally about to say he could be a brown low smoky. Um, mm. because from what we've seen in the preseason, he's, he's fit firing top of his game. Um, so if you if you don't select him, I think you are very, very silly because I mentioned Whitfield in terms of uh, primos that are underpriced. He is number one, far and away, the most yeah. underpriced primo, and he's going to score uh, back the way he was when he won that brown low. So yeah, get him in your sides. There's another guy, Liam. Yes. Paddy Cripps from my mob. My God, I almost slid off my seat when I was watching him live. I was getting very excited and, and probably even more excited apart from the fact that uh, you would have seen on Twitter as well, that I, I did take a sneaky snap of, oh, uh, of Sammy Walsh. I spotted him. Not the uh, first. Sitting in, it was one of, <laughs> one of many. I mean, on the night you should have seen my camera roll. 
in my uh, in, in my phone. He's a peeping Tom. Quick smile, I changed my uh, my background. Um, but uh, yeah, he's one guy. <laughs> Paddy Cripps moving on. Sorry, I just got just got. I was living in my own, own fantasy for a second then. Um, I did. I was about to reveal who, <laughs> what the previous photo was in my background. Uh, Ash, hope you're not uh, listening. Uh, but uh, yeah, Paddy Cripps. Let's let's move on quickly. <laughs> Priced at four fifty four point eight k, and watching him live, yeah. my god, like awesome showing against the Saints. Um, he scored one fifty seven um, against the D's to to really really back it up, and I think seeing both of those performances. Very much so. He's back to his best. I mean, I saw him obviously last year, previous season to that, um, and seeing him play injured. I think he had back issues at one stage, mm-hmm. and the club wouldn't rest him, um, and they persisted with him. And then he had shoulder issues, and just obviously wasn't playing his best. But now the way he was moving, he was moving from contest to contest. He was even the one thing I loved as well is when he was having a rest, he was being rested up forward, and he was playing as a genuine tall forward. Um, and playing to his strengths. So um, I'm, I'm sounding like a real, you know, Carlton supporter here, but like talking from a super coach standpoint, really impressive. And it's mm. actually, he's almost played his way into my side, but the only reason he hasn't is because I've been burnt so many times by yeah. Cooper. Um, and just because he's at that awkward price point um, for me, for that reason alone, I'm going to have to pass him up um, because I've got Matty Rowell, who's playing, I guess, in his position in my midfield, um, who I have more confidence in. But uh, I think for those people who want to pick him, uh, absolutely go ahead because uh, I think all signs are there that he's going to get back to top form, full flight, and he's going to make you a bit of cash and potentially could finish among the top eight players uh, come the end of the season in terms of scoring uh, in the top eight. Yeah, I'm not um, – I personally, I'm probably going to forgo him. I think, as you said, he sort of sits at that awkward price point and he sort of sits in an awkward spot where I wouldn't be able to fit him into my side. Um, potentially if I'm really strapped for cash, maybe I could downgrade Lockie Neal to a Patrick Cripps. Um, I haven't been burnt to the same extent. I didn't start him last year. Um, I started your man, Bolshe, instead. And that worked out well. I did the opposite. <laughs> I started Cripps. That's, that's the main reason why it's burnt into my memory. Yeah. I missed out on Walshie. I started Cripps. <sighs> yeah. No, I think I, I don't dislike the pick of him. Um, I just think... At his price point, again, you're kind of picking him not necessarily to make cash, but he's if he makes 150k, he's sitting at what 600, um, yep. 600k. So you're picking him to be a, a keeper, um, and that means he's going to be a top eight mid, and you'd have to be averaging sort of that 110 to 115, um, which is an increase of about 20 to 25 points in his last of his average from last season. Mm. It's not without the realms. I don't think it's a massive stretch because we have to remember in um, he averaged 119 and 117 in 2018 and 2019. So it's not like yep. he's sort of, it's impossible. Yep. I just think it's a bigger risk and just his awkward price just sort of locks him out of my side at this stage. But I'm, I'm not against picking him by any yeah. stretch. The, the the big thing for me, uh, just quickly on Cripper as well, is the fact that he's kicking goals. Yeah. Um, previous years, he's really struggled with that, um, both set shots and, and kicking on the run. I mean, he was wasn't really kicking uh, much when he was injured due to that back injury. It was a lot of handballs and uh, saw that he was, he was still kicking um, against the D's and stuff. And that to me says that he's, he's fully fit and firing. So um, to add that extra string to his bow in terms of kicking goals, just means that he's, he's elevated his ceiling back to the way it was. Um, like you said, back when he was scoring those averages in 2018, 2019. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, let's move on to the next, next cab off the rank. Uh, Matty Rao, 342.9K. Um, and this is sort of why I'm not picking Crips, I think, because um, if we're speaking to back to their best, if recent form is any indication, then the early signs that would suggest that, you know, we're back to the insane scoring that we got from Matty Rao in his debut season, the first, what was it, five games that he played? Yeah. Um, Brownlow votes, maximum Brownlow votes, votes in <sighs> his first four or whatever it was. Yeah, it's insane. It's nuts, absolutely nuts. Um, so he followed up his score of 118 uh, from the first practice match with a super impressive game against the Cats where he finished with 27 disposals, 18 of which were contested, seven tackles, eight clearances, and a super coach score of 121. So we're looking like, I don't know, it just it's looking good. It's looking great. Yeah. Uh, and another feather in his cap was that he had the most CBAs for the Suns with 24. So he's definitely playing through that engine room. Um, the only thing that you know i would like to see maybe if he's hitting the scoreboard and that's just going to increase his scoring 
Um, and I think that'll come. I think that'll come. We did see that sort of enter his game in that debut season. Um, of course, we've got to be, you know, somewhat concerned about his fitness. Um, obviously, he's missed sort of the better part of two seasons um, it, to an extent. Oh, he played a bit last year, actually, in the end. Yeah, um, yeah, he, he just missed that big chunk um, being in the middle. for minutes as well. Yeah. Um, but I think his, yeah, he uses professionalism and as, as, as is written here by Damon, you just don't lose talent. Exactly right. You don't lose talent, talent. And you might've noticed Liam, I was nodding profusely. You were, you know, you know, like the, speaking of gifts, I was speaking about, you know, obviously Dr. Phil doing the talking about, uh, Mr. Scott, the, the gif I was emulating there was uh, Jack Nicholson where he just like, have you seen that gif yeah. where he's like yeah. laughing and it's like zooming in on his <laughs> face? That's me. That is me. When, as you were talking about, about Raul, because you're hitting on all the points um, and hitting on all my points as well, Liam. Mm. Um, really, really good. So um, thank you for that. And um, he'll be in my side. And uh, even though he's in the, on the radar, he's well and truly in my radar. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's almost a lock. I think it's, he just sort of sits at that, Again, it's a bit of an awkward price at 342, but I think it's worth it. Yeah. I think yeah, if you're going sure. a locky Neil, um, like I think, yeah, if you're going a locky Neil, I like it. Um, with Matty Rao sort of following up in that D5 slot. Yep. Yeah. Uh, M5, he, sorry, M5. Yeah. yeah M5. Yeah, I imagine that. Gee whiz. Who oh. knows? He could he can <laughs> might, might, might drift back there. Gee whiz. <laughs> Amazing. But Matty Rowell, get on, as we call it, the, uh, we dubbed it last week, the, uh, the Rowell coaster. But uh, as we said, the only way is up, up baby. The only, only way is up. And uh, that's where I'm going. That's where I've been talking about Matty Rowell. Uh, let's move <laughs> on quickly because I'm losing my pants. Uh, Jared Berry priced at 268.5K. Uh, a lot of people are going to have him in their sides, and I think for good reason. Scored 158 in the first practice match and then followed it up with a solid 82 from 19 disposals, six marks, and five tackles. And uh, we spoke of his ability to score from a historical standpoint, standpoint sorry, having averaged 84.9 and 97 in 2019 and 2020. So his big scoring hasn't really come from nowhere, but um, naturally he is best 22, so there's no real worry about that. And uh, most pleasantly, he's actually been given ample minutes in the middle for the Lions, which yeah. uh, is a real big tick there because that was one thing I was worried about, especially uh, with the return of, um, what's his face? That dude, number one draft pick, Rainer. Oh, he yeah, knows yeah, who yeah. he is. Um, but yeah, it comes down to whether or not you want to take the risk on him given his injury troubles. He has had a few over, over rec mm. recent seasons. But again, as we spoke about, I think all these guys that we're talking about, Lockie Neal, Paddy Cripps, Matty Rowell, Barry, and we're about to talk about Caldwell. All these guys here on the radar, and they all have had injury issues. That's the common theme among all of them. Uh, and, yeah, and it's why they sort of one. sit at that price. Like yeah. it's, it must be noted. Um, exactly. But I think it just comes down, yeah, as you sort of said, it's it's the risk of those injuries um, and whether you want to take that on board. I think, so I, I'm sort of tossing up between Barry and the next bloke, Caldwell. I might run through Caldwell and then we can discuss it. Yeah. Um, Caldwell is 266.7K, so just slightly cheaper than um, Jared Barry. And he did remind us of his talents against the Saints, scoring 111 super coach points off 24 disposals, four marks and five tackles. Um, the talent has always been there, but I guess the question remains as to how much of the game will be spent in the end room um, it should be noted Merritt only really played, well, they played less than a half a game. Mm. Um, Shield was missing from the lineup on a leadership camp, apparently. Um, what? Okay. Yeah, I know. Anyway. Um, and Parrish really didn't play much, played sort of a much more forward. Um, I think just sort of being managed for minutes, um, not, not taking too much of a risk with the sort of the star lineup. Um, so I don't know whether... I'd read too much into his 111 super coach points. I think he'll still score well, but I don't know whether I'd expect 111 from him week in, week out. Um, so I don't know if we can trust sort of his scoring um, because I don't know exactly what his role is. Um, one interesting stat is that in the second half, seven of the nine CBAs came when Merritt was being rested. Um, one, I guess one thing to compare Jared Berry and Jai Caldwell, I think they... They sort of sit in the same position of um, where they, sorry, they, they sit in the same position of where they are in sort of like the pecking order for the for the for the midfield. Um, I think they're both sort of not first picked, 
um, in that in that sort of midfield rotation. Um, but I think Barry's role when he's not playing in the middle is more super coach friendly. I think he's going more to the wing. So he's still sort of having that midfield role, whereas Caldwell's tending to go more forward. Um, which is why he's sort of more of a risk. So I think despite the sort of the, the 2K difference, um, I think Barry is probably a better option overall. Yeah, and just with Barry as well, um, probably should mention he had uh, 11 CBAs on the weekend. Uh, so he, was, he had three more than Jared Lyons, who was obviously rested for a fair bit. Um, but he was behind McCluggage, who had 14, Zach Bailey, 16, uh, and Lockie Neal, 23, and of course, uh, McInerney, 18, is the, mm. uh, the ruck. But... It's showing he's still getting, you know, double figures with CBAs. Uh, yeah. He doesn't have to obviously lead the amount of CBAs. Uh, you get the ilk of, uh, you know, when he's up and running fully, Lions will will top that as well as Neil. But um, the fact that he's getting double figures for me gives me more confidence over Caldwell. I think the fact, as you said, missing Merritt, missing Shield, um, and the fact that, yeah, we saw in game that, you know, in the second half when Merritt was rested, that he had seven of the nine CBAs uh, during that period. Um for Caldwell, it's yeah. I, I just don't trust him. He's he's really good potential at that price point, but I just can't justify any other year. I probably could if there wasn't mm. a Berry that was standing out of that price or a Matty Rail or yeah, any of these guys were spoken about. I would most definitely take the punt, but I just don't have the cash to to do so. Unfortunately, I think if he was forward eligible, I'd take it. Um, yep. Yep. I'd take the risk. Um, but because he's only midfield eligible, I just don't think he fits in as nicely. Um, but yeah, let's move on to Damon. You can move on. No, God, please, no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's probably uh, well, yeah, one of these guys, I think you'll you'll find that um, he's quite uh, mm. yeah at home in this category mm. uh, and probably has been over uh, over the past couple of years at least uh, for good reason due to injury. And it is Nat 5 priced at 546.5K. And uh, obviously, when you're talking about Nat 5, there's no question about his ability or his scoring when it comes to super coach. But uh, given the fact that he's missed both preseason hitouts and has a really bad injury history plaguing him over the past few years. The Frio gun simply cannot be trusted. Unfortunately, he's the sort of guy where if you want to get him in your team, uh, you can just wait, wait a few games. He'll uh, cop an injury, drop in price and you'll get him in. But I think more so as well is that say year on year, I think you'll find that he's going to be playing even more time up mm. forward. Um, I mean, he's been super lethal, sorry, super lethal the time that he actually has spent up forward for Frio, but you know, he's, he's a multi, you know, faceted player in terms of his ability and strengths. But yeah, for me, you, you, you've just got to overlook him just because of that price point. If he was cheaper for some grace of God, if he was, then uh, you maybe take a punt on him. But again, he's going to get injured at some stage, some stage. So for me, just got to slide past him. Yeah, I don't think I've touched him in the last three or four years. I remember, I think I had him in the first the first season I played super coach and he just, he got injured and got pulled out at a really weird time. And it just, it just ruined my, my, my weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just sort of never touched him since he's always, always been on my never again list. I think the only thing that's going to be interesting and the reason that I would hold off and wait as well is that he's uh, probably going to get some juicy DPB action as a, as a forward. So I think it's definitely worth, it's not sort of don't pick him. It's sort of don't pick him now, wait and then see. Um, but I think I'd always, even then I'd probably be erring on the side of not picking him later as well, just because of his injury history. Because you just know that you're going to trade him in and that's the weekend that he's going to, you know, score nine yep. and miss the next three weeks. <sighs> exactly. Anyway. I, can, I can feel the pain in your voice, Liam. Mm. And and I, I relate to you because I've had him uh, early days uh, before before you, your young super coach, <laughs> um, you know, uh, back when he was actually at full flight and he was starting to get those niggles. And mm. I was like, nope, that's it. I'm penciling him in as like my never again, or ne sorry, not never again, but never, I was here, never again start list. Um, yeah. Because I'd always know he'd get injured and drop in price and then I'd grab him. Um, whereas a lot of people were starting with him because he's obviously a gun, but he's at that stage now where you can't afford to start him at all. Because you know, there's he's kind of just slid down the list um, of yeah season primos. Yeah, no, definitely, I agree. And second on the list is Charlie Constable, two hundred thirteen point four k. He hasn't had the opportunity at all um, at his new club that we were all hoping and and praying that he'd get as a as a cheap super coach option. Um, he's obviously a seasoned body and a mature ager, um, so it is rather surprising. Even Atkins has played ahead of him. Um, 
we may instead sort of be a bit more of a depth option at the Suns. Um, and that's not good for us. Uh, we know Check his <laughs> insane ball winning ability um, in limited game time at the Cats he equated to sort of bulk points. But it goes without saying with zero game time, game time he isn't a prospect. Maybe he's a maybe he'll come in mid season and kill it, and we can pick him up as a sort of cash cow. Yeah, sort that's of. true. Maybe hopefully, I pray. That's good. I like that thinking. It's it's, it's looking long term. Positive. So um, yeah, it's a positive. It's a positive out of a. You got to manifest these things. Yeah, that, it's true. And um, as you take a, a nice sweet sip of your um, Pepsi, nectar Max, of the gods, nectar of the gods for sure, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, yes. Um, Absolutely. I totally agree with you on both points there. The, the choice of beverage and, and, your, <laughs> and your opinion on Constable. Uh, now let's move on. And I'm sure we share the same view on mm-hmm. these two guys as well when it comes to Ruck and Ruck Locks. And it is Maxi Gorn and Brody Grundy. Uh, for both of us, we are firmly of the belief that these two will be the top two scoring Rucks come the end of the year. Some might say that uh, Darcy could give it a shake. And yeah, for sure. I think he mm. probably could. We might revisit this come the end of the season and, and say that, you know, Darcy's eclipsed both of these guys and it, it well could happen. Well could happen. But uh, his ability to pick up small niggles, Darcy, <laughs> makes him an unreliable option despite his scoring ability. So um, as we say with Gorney and Grundy, or Gaundy as we call them, set and forget. You just got mm. to um, lock them in, throw away the key, sit back, s- Bloody sip on your pina colada or whatever you want and kick up your feet and yeah, just just enjoy the uh, enjoy the points. Bathe in the points. We can sip on our Pepsi Max. Oh, yeah, in our case, Watch Pepsi them. Maxes. <laughs> Don't have a pina colada. What am I thinking? Throw that over your shoulder. Um, like, wait nah. up, wait up, sorry, go have a Pepsi Max. <laughs> Hold the ice. <laughs> um, no, I agree wholeheartedly. He's uh, Gordon Grundy have not left my side. Um, the only stage they were was when I had Darcy in to see whether I could fit him in price wise and just sort of mm. budget for him, I guess. But I just don't think he's the right pick, but mentioning Darcy, he's on the radar. Um, yep. As we mentioned above, um, he's not, there's no questioning his scoring ability, um, especially as the sole rock. And we know he's going to be the sole rock for Fremantle, um, but he's just so injury prone and he picks up niggles mid game. Yeah. Um, and just sort of, and then he'll play through it and then he'll pick up another niggle. Um, and I think at his price point, it's just too risky. Yeah. Um, he did score 95 against the Eagles and he is a very decent proposition. If you have the heart set on him, I personally just think that I just Gordon Grundy, they just showed so much on the weekend as well. And I think there's a reason they've sort of been the, the reliable duo that they have been for super coaches and i think you just need to bear that in mind yeah yeah it's it's one of those things isn't it like um you know the, the wheel's going to turn at some stage and mm. darcy or someone new is going to going to come out of the shadows or out of the ferns like uh, homer simpson i don't know why i'm referring to all these gifts now but uh, this is the episode to do it <laughs> um been doing it a lot um just continue the running theme but yeah with uh with gone a lot i know a lot of people would say yes but what about jackson um and him limiting the ceiling of gone yes he probably will during the season at some stages but in all honesty i prefer that over a darcy like who as you mentioned can pick up a niggle in game and during the preseason so far, he's actually, from memory, he's picked up two niggles um, during training, uh, not so much in-game. But uh, the fact that that's happened already, it's like, I, I was like Steve Bashimi in um, in Billy Madison, where he's, he puts on lipstick like a freak and then like crosses out the name of Billy Madison on his hit list um, <laughs> on, the, on the paper on his wall. And that, that was literally me when uh, I found out he was... Yeah, he's copying all these all these niggles, and the, the the game, the real stuff hasn't started yet. So yeah, I'm looking elsewhere. It's not good signs. No, but um, the other guy on the radar is uh, of course Nick Nat, and uh, he's priced at a little bit cheaper, six twenty seven point four k. And if you're someone who has spent all their money elsewhere in their team and needs the next best option that is a slightly a little bit cheaper, look no further than Nick Nat. He's uh, obviously got insane scoring ability in terms of points per minute and reminded us of this on the weekend against Freo where he scored 65 points in just over half a game. So, uh, yeah, he, he you know doesn't have the midfield around him to help him um, with hitouts to advantage. Um, so I guess that will really put a cap on his scoring um, because of due to those, especially injuries at West Coast at the moment. But, um, yeah, I mean, he's someone uh, for me who's really the only other option uh, outside yeah. of Gorn, Grundy and Darcy. 
Yeah, I agree. I just think my concern is probably just that midfield sort of injury crisis, I guess, at the uh, the West Coast Eagles. I think that could just be something that could limit his scoring. Um, he doesn't pick up his scoring from possessions. He tends to pick it up from or mark. So it's it's sort of his a lot of his scoring comes from um, his sort of hit out work. So I think that could be a bit of a concern um, just with a more inexperienced midfield around him. But let's move on to no God, please, no. Um, <laughs> and that is Braden Proust, 204.7K. He came off a great performance on the weekend, which reignited the hope, the collective hopes of every mm. super coacher out there uh, for a, a, a genuine rut cash cow um, with some potential. But a dangerous tackle by the JWS big man has seen him cop a one-match ban. So he's going to be missing that round one game. And hopefully that puts to bed any idea of anyone yep. playing him as your ruck too. Uh, Don't do it. Yeah. I'm glad. You know what? I actually, you know what? I kind of, I'm a bit annoyed because I'm like, if you were going to do it, it was so risky. And now you just, you, you've, you've been let off. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Like those coaches, because we both knew, we, we spoke about it. We mentioned it. We're like, yeah. I probably wouldn't do it, but if you want to do it, it's up to you. But we knew that he's the sort of risk that you don't want to take because of the fact that, yeah, we didn't know that he was actually first choice ruck and Flynn was actually getting more CBAs and mm. stuff over the, over the journey of the preseason so far. Uh, so it's a bit of a blessing in disguise. I think for those of you out there who are, who like to live dangerously, but um, I definitely wouldn't do it and you can't do it now. So um, yeah, I mean, there are going to be those R3. people who, I was just about to say, a lot of people will <laughs> probably persist with him at R3, but if you're doing that, even regardless of that, the fact that, as we've mentioned throughout this episode, you've had to fork out even more coin for top-end rookies. You just can't afford to do it uh, at, at this season out of any mm. um, because it's just a waste of money. And you're really think, really yeah. putting a cap on, on you know, the quality of rookies that you can get. And I think we'll touch on it shortly, but there's some other better options, not necessarily better options, but just other options that won't cost you, you know, the, the half the price of, of yeah. Bruce um, that, that you can be considering instead. Yeah, but before sure. we get there, we better move on to the forwards, and let's yes. start with the let's start with the locks, Damon. Yes, and uh, you can probably guess who they are, or at least the first two anyway. I think every man and their dog, uh, or cat in my case as well, uh, will have these two, and it is Josh Dunkley and Zach Butters. Uh, and in, I've actually put him in this category as well, just by sheer fact that, that everyone has him as well, and I think that negates any risk that comes with him. But so uh, you probably have a bit of a different mindset to him, Liam, and you finally come around to him, and it I is did. Stephen Caniglio. Um, but it's fair to say, yes, the first two going to be in every single super coach team for good reason. With Butters, he backed up. He's 167 with 114 points against Adelaide in the second practice match. Meanwhile, Dunkley continued on his primo ways with 120 <laughs> after his 124 in the first practice match. And with Cox, he rounds out the list as F3 for the pure fact <laughs> He's rounded out the preseason with 112 points, and already, already, I'm getting tongue tied at this. Uh, the fact that he's in 69 percent of teams, the second most owned player <laughs> in Supercoach Liam. You couldn't, you couldn't bypass that, could you? No, and look, I, I wasn't against picking him. I just didn't like him at F3 without having seen his role. I feel much yep. more confident okay. in him. So he yep. is sitting in my team at F3, the place that I never wanted him to be. <laughs> you come <laughs> around finally, forcefully. But, well, he was always in my side. I think it wasn't so much an issue of that. It was just more so I wanted to get him, I wanted to try and see if I could build someone into the side that would sit in F3 and he'd sit in F4. Yep. Um, I think that's not possible now, but I'm also content with his scoring um, and what we've seen. So I'm, I'm quite happy there. Um, and, you know, you could be like me and you could be a bit contrarian. Yeah. <laughs> I would not select him, which I have, so I'm not really contrarian. But yep. um, I think you'd yeah, you'd be behind the eight ball if he does carry on the form that we've seen um, and you'd probably need to waste a trade bringing him in anyway. So it's just, mm. you know, safest play here to start him. Yep. I'm glad you come around, Liam. I'm very, very glad. Uh, yeah, I mean, I love how the fact you had to be like almost pushed into it. I, I really... <laughs> He was in my side the whole time. I was just trying to try to move him down to an F four. That's all I wanted. Yeah, yeah. He was he was was he he was in your side, but was he in your side, Liam? There's a difference. I don't know what that means, but yeah. Anyway, I'm, yeah, I'm <laughs> concerned. Let's move on. In terms of rookies, <laughs> the only, there's like no locks in the forward line. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. Nah, there's um, one. There's one. 
this one. Yeah. Dead giveaway. And he's going to set you back a little bit. Yeah. Um, but that's Josh Rochelle. 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 Rich, 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 I don't Ross. know. Ross. Ross. <laughs> yeah, Ross. <laughs> um, Ross and Rachel. Um, and he's probably the only real lock with the perspective of job security scoring and that cash cow ability. Um, he's backed up his promising preseason debut with an 85 point scoring against Port, where he managed to kick three goals and laid an impressive nine tackles. Mm. So just get him in. I think uh, with the lack of other options, you're going to need to. Yep, no, exactly. Lock and load. There's uh, there's too few options unless you're going to go for uh, the likes of Paddy McCartan or uh, Sam DeConning. Those are really mm. the only other options. And I think because of the fact there's no rookies in defense, they're pretty much both down in defense. So um, yeah. yeah, it's very unfortunate. But just in terms of lock, load and play uh, in your, your starting uh, 18 or starting 22, Get him in, get him in, Josh Rochelle. Ross. Yeah, and I think that being said, we're gonna get is he's gonna be a bit of a roller coaster. We're gonna get good games, we're gonna get poor games, we're gonna get good scores, yeah. we get poor scores. He's a he's a small forward at the end of the day. But yeah. if he can sort of continue laying tackles, that's where his scoring is gonna come from. Yeah, absolutely. Let's move on to uh, on the radar. Beep beep, and it is uh, Isaac Heaney. Uh, he's on the radar of a lot of people out there. I imagine uh, priced at four fifty four point five k. Uh, and he had six CBAs, uh, unfortunately, I say, on the weekend because he played a majority of time up forward as uh, Mills, of course, returned from injury. So that was the one dampener on his game. However, playing up forward, that's where he's been actually doing most of his damage, especially in the preseason. He scored 113 from 17 disposals, four marks and seven tackles. Um, and uh, yeah, kicked the, um, kicked the four goals as well. I think it was from memory. So mm. uh, absolutely killed it. Mind you, he did this without Buddy in the forward line as the, uh, the Swans focal point up forward. But as we know, like I just said, he has the ability to do it alongside him as well. But uh, the big question mark, as we've said all along, even last year, all along, is uh, the fact that he's got terrible durability. So can you really afford, this is my question, can you really afford to spend that sort of coin on someone as injury prone as Heaney? No, no, no. For nah. those of you listening to the Big podcast, nah. you can't see Liam. This is part of the reason why you should be watching us on YouTube yeah, as well. On YouTube, jump, jump across. Yep, yeah, Liam was shaking his head. We can't, we can't replicate that in sound. No, sorry, but I just, I don't even want to talk about Isaac Heaney to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, look, I personally would have had him in the no God please no section yeah. of this podcast, no, but I, I think, but I think it's good to talk about him. I think some people are like to like like him like to play him I've had him once or twice and sort of always since then he sort of sits in that same category as Fife where I just I start him and then he gets injured and then he just never really lives up to the hype I hope not not the hype but I guess the super coach hype he he is a good player um and I just don't think he scores well enough um and I think he's he's going to manage scores that are good in the in the forward line but he's not getting the mid minutes he's not going to get as he's not going to score as well as what we hope you know what I like in Heaney too? I just had a, a flash of inspiration. This is how quirky my brain is. But it, you know those moments in movies where, you know, the uh, the boy or the teen in this uh, this case goes out to like the woman that he's pining for and like is throwing rocks at her bedroom window to get her attention mm. and then starts strumming on the guitar for attention and, you know, trying trying to win her love. That's, I think I can imagine Heaney doing that to both of us because he's he's trying desperately to win our approval, I reckon. And he's just mm. not getting it. But it's unfortunate. Heaney, I actually, I like him as a player, but... I don't think until he actually shows a run of form where he's not going to get injured, then um, yeah, that's not going to happen. I'm sorry, Heaney. You can throw as many rocks as my, at my window as you want. I'm not opening up. <laughs> but anyway, let's let's move on. Let's sorry, move my, on to uh, my brain is in a quirky spot because I Adam really Trelaw. <laughs> Adam Trelaw. You can you can uh, you can talk about him. 483.3k <laughs> mid forward eligible. He's made back to back solid showings in his uh, preseason games. Um, I saw one of them sort of more firsthand with um, playing against the, my, my boys, the Dons. Yep. Um, but he did score 132 from 29 disposals on the weekend, six marks and two tackles, and he managed two goals as well. Hmm. So most pleasingly, he did have 17 CBAs, one less than McRae and two more than Bond. So the opportunity is certainly there for him to reclaim a more permanent role in the engine room, albeit for now, but it's it's Bevo. We can't trust him. Um, so... I wouldn't, I would tread carefully with Trelaw. I think he's sort of, he sits at an awkward-ish price point. I think just with the lack of rookie, like with with the lack of cheap rookies, it's so hard 
to go for it's, it's hard to fill out a pre, a side with a forward line with lots of primos and i think adam trollo mm. just unfortunately not gonna make the cut i wouldn't start him instead of josh dunkley and i wouldn't start him instead of zach butters yep. and i think that then means that he's sort of precluded on the on the price point mm. yeah exactly even though he is, he is pretty cheap it's a, he's a good good value um he's good value for yeah. return but uh, yeah, as we saw, and the fact that he's getting good, like good amount of CBAs is good, but like price point, um, the fact that, yeah, he's, there's no way you're going to select him, as you said, ahead of Butters and Dunkley. And then the fact that he's playing under Bevo and come the regular season, it's not, um, it's not going to be unusual to see him and then like marooned up forward. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I just think it comes down to how you're going to cut someone else to fit him in. Mm. And I just yeah. can't see how that works in my side personally. Um, mm. But I think it would be probably similar in most people's sides. Yeah, for sure. You got to be frugal with money. And uh, there's so many guys at awkward price points. And there's another guy here, uh, Mitch McGovern, uh, my man from the Baggers, uh, priced at 256K as a forward, who uh, actually may get defensive eligibility mm. come uh, round six if he continues his role, which he should because he's playing in Liam Jones's role. And uh, he actually, I watched him live against the D's for the first time this year. And he is playing like his brother, like an AA defender. I'm not just saying that as a Carlton supporter, but I've got both eyes here, not one eyed. He's literally like the way he played. He is. If, if you, if I didn't know he was Mitch McGovern, I'd be like, this guy is like going to be a breakout contender as, as a defender mm. because since switching into defense, he's, well, let me just say, first of all, he scored a hundred from 19 disposals, yeah. six marks and four tackles. Mind you all from 62%. Time on ground after he yeah, virtually nice. sat out the last quarter. Um, so seeing him live, the one thing I, I really took note of, and, and mind you, I used to work for Carlton, so I and, and film him out in the training track, so I know him firsthand as to like his strengths and how he plays. And he is playing again, like I mentioned just before, not like Mitch McGovern. Like I've never seen him play like this before ever. He's playing with you know the solid contested marking ability. He's always had that as a strength, but really hasn't had that playing up forward. His ability to read the play, intercept when the ball's kicked down the line, running off his man, similar to like Liam Jones, uh, who had a really good strength in that uh, area as well. But more so, I think this is the one thing that I love the most as a Carlton supporter, but also as a you know, looking at him as a super coach prospect, is his second and third efforts. Now, he's always been renowned and labeled as lazy, and he's been carrying a little bit of weight in recent seasons since donning the navy blue. And he has. There's no no question about it. But the fact that he's actually using second and third efforts, and there were a couple of efforts there that I saw where he was chasing down blokes at top speed and with an intent that I've never seen before. So that in itself shows to me that he's playing with a bit of desire that's he hasn't had before. So, I mean, I can't give him any more raps. And yeah. I, I actually want to find as much money as I can to fit him in my into my team because he is he's a different player. And uh, if you forget the name, I reckon select him on Fall Malone. Um, and you could totally justify it. And he, But yeah, again, talking about that price point, 256K, super awkward. Um, and there's a guy that I've got him in his spot at the moment, and it is Will Brody, who we'll speak about shortly. But yeah, if you can find that cash, I want to get him in. Yeah, he's, he's definitely in my side. Um, I've got him in because he's sort of the highest price point for those players that you might be considering and the ones we'll be talking about soon. Um, just after this so I think he's in there because it's sort of budgeted for if that makes sense um, if I choose to bring in a Will Brody or a someone else at a similar price point I'm going to be having cash left over which is always good but I'm also I'd rather start him and if he does fail I've got those corrective trades I've got the trade boost and I've got the five extra trades that we would normally get that I can then use to uh corrective trade to, to someone like Will Brody, who we'll touch on now. And he comes in at 224.3K. He's mid and forward eligible. Now, here's one that I'm also considering, but I think with the trade boosts and the the five um, the five extra trades that we do get, I'm willing to start with Mitch McGovern at that higher price point. And then if Mitch McGovern fails, then I can move on to Will Brody if he shows more promise. Um, he did score an even 100 um, against the West Coast on the weekend. Um, and it came off the back of 23 disposals and eight tackles. But even more impressively, he was able to do this with just 67% time on ground and he managed the 13 CBAs. Query obviously still remains whether he can carry his form across to the season proper. And it should be noted that obviously Fife 
um, didn't play. So there was no sort of, there was those extra CBAs. I do think though, and I think Damon, you're probably more of a bigger proponent for Will Brady than I am at this stage. Um, I think Fife does go play in more forward. So he's not going to have as big an impact, but I think he still will have an impact on Will Brody. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's still question marks over Brody. Um, we still haven't seen him do it in the season proper. So, I mean, I've, I've got him in just because of the fact that he's getting those CBAs, but yeah, we need to see the Frio squad at, uh, at full strength before we can actually make a, con- a conclusive decision. Yeah, no, I agree entirely with you there. Uh, moving on to the, uh, to round it out is, uh, is Tristan, is it Jerry or Cherry? I don't know how to pronounce it. Neither do I. I'm Let's sorry. go with Jerry Cherry. Uh, he's priced <laughs> at 208.2K and he actually did look pretty good in the practice match against this one. He's scoring 96 mm. and he played 89% of match time and managed 29 hitouts, five marks, which were all contested, mind you, and 17, disposal up, 17 disposals against Tom Hickey. So pleasingly, he looked to get the number one ruck duty for the ruse, um, which is which is really good, um, but yeah, like you uh, you've said in the notes here, Liam, that uh, it's times like these that we <laughs> wish we've actually had a third preseason game because yeah, we've had a chance to see him you know play at his strengths, but we just want to see him rec- replicated in a third preseason game um, to be a little bit more comfortable. But for me, he's, again, he's at that awkward price point, and I'd prefer to be more comfortable. Uh, with a McGovern, for example, who I'm mm. really pleased with, or Brody, who has shown really good um, scoring across both games, um, and not just the uh, not just the one. So, yeah, uh, for me, I'm going to bypass him. Uh, any mm. other year where we didn't have to spend extra dosh for for high price rookies, I'd probably take a punt, but not so much this year. Yeah, I don't think it's a pick for the faint of heart. Um, Goldie's obviously still going to be in the side and still, you know, going to loom there. Mm. I don't know whether they're going to give off a hundred percent sort of free reign to, to Jerry Cherry. Um, but so we could see him get marooned forward as well. Yep. Um, he is only forward eligible. So if he did get a bit, a big chunk of the rack time, he would become, you know, dual position, which would be nice, yep. but um, he's not currently. So I don't think there's that much benefit at that price point. Um, I do like him for his scoring. And if he does get to play that, primary ruck is going to score well, but uh, it's a big risk. It's a big risk at his price point, And there's not really anyone you can downgrade to, um, unfortunately. Yeah. And what about, uh, what about the, Oh God, please no lamb. Give us, give us your best, uh, best rendition of that. No God, please no. <laughs> is that good? You happy with that? Oh uh, yeah, sure. I had to build up to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah um, didn't have to. <laughs> Yes, and I think it's a bit harsh who we've got on this list. Um, it's not really like mm. a – it's more like strike a line through him at this stage. Yeah. Um, as, as, as a first pick. Um, it is Taron Thomas, 459.3K, mid-forward eligible. I would have had Heaney here, let's be honest. Um, That's true. I like that. And it is a bit harsh. It is a bit harsh on Thomas, um, <laughs> but it comes after an underwhelming performance in both – pre-season games uh, with scores from just, uh, sorry, around just the A70 to 80 mark is sort of a bit of an awkward price tag as we sort of discussed with um, some of the others. You're being picking him as a keeper um, and from the output we've seen so far, I just don't think what we've seen is strong enough in his scoring. Mm. I think he's definitely fallen behind others on the list who sit at that similar price like Trelaw and Butters. Most certainly Butters should be in your side. Um, yeah. I think he's definitely behind Trelaw. Um yep like easily behind Trelaw and I'd even have him behind some of the other 200k players yeah. as well. Let's be honest. Um, and if he does come good, um, I think he should be an upgrade target. I think he came, like we saw some solid scoring for him last season, but at this stage, I think we can just put a line through starting him, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's an upgrade insane. target, I think for me, but yeah, like yourself. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunate, um, but all the best for um, for Taron Thomas. It's like sending him out. It's just that, that the ship has sailed. Mm. Farewell, Taron. We may meet again later in the season. But um, Liam, we look at the rookies overall, and it's literally as dry as the proverbial, or dry as the Sahara in this case. <laughs> yes, we've been left saying, where are you? Yes, not a rookie in sight. And we're looking for that uh, oasis, mm. Liam. To magically form oh. in front of us. 
That'd be, uh, geez, we're, we're thirsty. We're thirsty for rookies. Yeah, I'm going back yeah. to that, um, we're that, really that food out in the and desert. drink analogy. Yeah, we're out in the desert and we've got yeah. no sustenance. Yeah, it's like we've, we've uh, our super coach plane is, uh, I saw super coach roller coaster. Roller coaster. <laughs> it's like, come to a stop. <laughs> it's gone so high. It's just gone off the tracks. <laughs> and now we've landed in the desert. We've landed in the desert and we're now trekking through the Sahara and it is so, you can feel the hot wind. Yeah. And uh, we haven't drank for a couple of days and we're, we're just on all fours, the sand between our fingers, hot sand. And it's just like, we are so thirsty for rookies. And we, we, it's like a mirage we can see in the uh, in the distance. We're like, is that an oasis? No, is that it's a, not. Is that a super coach cash cow? Is that a cash cow? No, it's not. Is that a is that a is that a um is that a is that a bottom price day cost? No, it's not. No, uh, anyway, no. let's let's move on. But uh, yes, no, it's not because uh, Liam. Apart from those guys, we've compiled a list here of guys Ooh. who uh, we're going to call them the best of the rest in terms of rookies that are on offer. Um, that sounds like a, a phrase that Franco Cotto could use. Yeah. Best of the rest, Migalo, Migalo, anyway. Um, but these are the guys that you should be selecting on your bench. Tentatively, um, ahead of round one, just hold out hope that they actually are selected come round one for the debuts. But um, in defense, slim pickings, as we said, but uh, Hinge from Adelaide, he scored 64 on the weekend. Looks like an option, potentially. Uh, O'Driscoll for Frio. Don't think he played on the weekend. No, um, he has not played in either preseason game. Mm. Um, I think they were both, from what I understand, they were due to COVID protocol sort of isolation period thing. Yeah. But he, uh, he actually did impress in the uh, the match sim. So uh, all reports there, he played pretty well. But I think a couple of guys were arrested, of course. So how much you read into that, who knows? But if he gets the opportunity, uh, I think definitely put him on your bench because he is, from memory, mid defensive eligible yeah um Gip, Gipkis, uh quite a name there for for richmond i think it is uh scored yeah. 65 on the weekend and josh sin scored 29 and a half uh for port adelaide but um yeah we've yeah. heard from hinkers good old hinkers came out and said that um he is likely well i don't think he said likely but he said he may be looking to play in the early rounds but uh who knows? Like, there's no real certainty that he that he mm. will. Um, I think he said if he doesn't debut in round one, he may play in the early rounds. So, to me, that just says reading between the lines, he's he's not going to play. That uh, he doesn't have confidence in him just yet, and especially yeah. because of the fact that he didn't play the full game. Yeah, I I agree there. I think he's probably he's probably not one that I'd be banking on being a starter in my side. Uh, let's move on to the mids. We've got Josh Ward, who did impress on the weekend with a 124, which was a nice turnaround from his his score or is his showing on the um, on the unofficial First practice game. match. Yeah. Um, we've also got his teammate McDonald, who scored a 52. Hopefully, we can get him in his 117k, which would be nice. Uh, so- Soli- Soligo, Soligo. Soligo. Sounds I like think from Adelaide. Yeah. It sounds like a salami. <laughs> like a... <laughs> Saliga. Yeah, can I get uh, um, can I get 200 grams of the Saliga, please? <laughs> Who's at the deli? Uh, he scored 45 for the for Adelaide with um Laird out due to his broken hand. Is there mm. a spot that opens up yes. for Saligo? <laughs> we <sausage>. hope so. <laughs> mm. Um Elijah Hollands from the Suns, who just perpetually never plays. Um, I think he'll get a. I think he'll get a game this year. I don't know if he's a mm. starter. Um, also from the Suns, sit, sit. I can't say his name. Sit, sit us? Ah, that makes sense. I think he did also not play though. Yeah. He's bottom priced, hundred and two k. Would be nice if he um, if he popped up. Uh, Dylan Stevens from the Swannies, sixty three. Nothing to really write home about. Uh, Howe from West Coast, forty seven. With the sort of plethora of midfielders missing, he's he's mm. one that could pop up. Um, Alex Davies, sort of a higher price around that 200k, 63 from the Suns, not too bad. And Cooper Stevens, uh, 62 for Geelong as a midfielder. Yes, and then moving to the rucks, we have uh, Sam Hayes, who scored 36 and a half, although uh, Lysett, I think, returned for Port. Um, so they were balancing out the ruck between both of those two guys. And mm. given Lysett's back, I was, you know, my ears pricked up a bit when he went down in the first game with injury and Sam Hayes took over and looked pretty good. But I don't know if he's going to get a debut now. I think he will definitely at some stage, but look to see if he can start in round one. Um, he is priced at, a, I think it's 124, is it? 123.9. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you might be able to save a bit of money. 
with these two guys, uh, these next two, Jack Hayes, bottom priced, uh, scored 60 on the weekend, and Hugh Dixon scored 45. Both of those two guys as well are forward eligible as well. So um, both of those two guys at the moment are in my forward line, um, but I would like to put one of them in R3. So I've got that um, that switcheroo flexibility between the forward line and rucks. Um, but it sort of it, it, it hinges on Hayes, whether or not he makes that round one debut. How Hayes is a ruckman, I do not understand. He's not particularly tall. No, uh, he's not. not. I just, it, it shocked me because there was one stage where he actually was, he sort of, ra- he sort of ran towards Draper in the rock and sort of fell into him. Um, and Draper sort of had his arm back and, and he sort of hit his elbow. And I'm looking at him like, th- that didn't make any sense. Like you've elbowed him in the head and he's a ruckman, <laughs> but your elbows were down. Um, anyway, I just thought I'd yeah. add that little tidbit in there. <laughs> <laughs> good one. Good one on that. In the- You'll notice how short he is now. In the four, he's 191 centimeters according to uh, the internet. Yep, that's that's it's really 192 short. 192 centimeters, yeah, real short. In, um, in comparison to me, I'm a bloody 170 fucking four yeah, know, centimeters right? or something. Just, but yeah, he's yes. he's short. He's super short. But what I mean is, as for a ruckman, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, in true. the forwards, that's moving on to small forward <laughs> Corey Durden. Speak of small. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what a segue! Good 43, on, Liam. 43 score in a half but was sobbed off with injury damon any intel there for us no he just literally went missing i actually didn't even realize was that like, he did the a game calf, and... but i don't know if it's like he did a calf or if he was just like precautionally taken yeah off. Well, to be honest i actually it wasn't until i read the match report on the drive home of course i wasn't driving i was in the passenger seat <laughs> but uh i was having a look at the match report and it was like scrolling down the afl app and saw durden with a calf and i was like what the i don't remember that and he actually yeah, I noticed he wasn't playing in the second half. And I thought it was just a case of like Vossi resting the entire forward line because Mackay only played a fir- the, what, the first half. Um, Durden came off. And I think we ended up playing Lockie Plowman, uh, Williamson, and there was someone else in the forward line. It was like literally a forward line full of defenders. It's quite yeah. funny. Quite, quite funny. But yeah, um, no extra intel there, unfortunately. Yeah, he just uh, did his calf. Don't know the extent of it. But um, yeah, just to watch and see there. Yep. Um, from my mob, we've got Kane Baldwin, 48. I don't, I'm not sold on, he might debut. I don't know. Mm. A bit not sure on him. Nick Martin, who did really impress. He scored 50 and a half and he had like 12 disposals in, in one quarter. Um, he did come on at half time, sort of like after half time. So he started in the third quarter. So there would have been against some tired bodies, but he just got to the right places, um, which I think, is really, really exciting. I think if he plays that that um, winger role, I think he could be a good pick and he's bottom, bottom price too. Mm. So definitely keep your eye on him. Um, and we've also got Finn McGuinness who scored 50 for the Hawks. Yeah, for the Hawks. Every time I see his name, for some reason, my brain is just so stupid. I read it as Maginus mm. instead of McGuinness. I don't know if it's because it's just spelt really weirdly. It's it like is double spelt, N, yeah. double S, but... Yeah, it's yeah, Maginus. I'm gonna call him. I'm gonna call him Two Minute Noodles, Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> now that brings us to the end of our super intense preseason analysis. Fingers crossed, we get word over the next week and a bit from some of the uh, coaches. I'm looking at you, Chris Scott, um, mm. as to which players we penciled in for around one debut to help us out a bit more, and maybe you know, Leon Cameron, you could do us some some good, just telling us that. Cogs is going to play pure midfield. <laughs> yeah, please, please. Um, who else we got? Uh, Bevo, Bevo, mate. Bevo, um, yeah, Bevo just, with, just... For those of you who are choosing uh, ads or selecting ads to law, please be kind to them. Don't stuff him around. Don't put him in the forward line, bloody 90% of the game. Um, you know, it's it's not good. It's not good. Not but, good, not good. Anyway, before we wrap up this episode, Liam, let's remind the listeners as to where they can find us. Yes, on YouTube, search Supercoach Edge and don't forget to like and subscribe. Yes. On Twitter, Supper, <laughs> supper, subscribe, supper, sub, sucker, sucker, subscribe. <laughs> on Twitter, you can search at Supercoach underscore Edge to follow us and you'll get all the latest preseason news. We'll uh, be letting you know as soon as we can of all of the inclusions and all the juicy little um ins and outs that we can uh, share with you um, as soon as they happen. It's where all the news is at. Um, on If you want to follow Damon at DamoJ88, you can follow myself at, at Liam Evans underscore 95. 
on Facebook and on Instagram, search Supercoach Edge and you'll find us there. And if, you know, if you have any questions, um, feel free to, to send them through, tag us or, or you know, send us, send us a DM and we'll uh, try and get back to you before the season starts. Yeah, we will be firing up again uh, our uh, I got to know in season. <laughs> not so much this season because as you would have, sorry, not not in the preseason because as you would see, I've just looked over at my uh, roadcaster and I've been going for an hour and 20 we uh, absolutely love these long episodes in the preseason, but we hope you do too because uh, we've been trawling through all of the uh, all of the research and analysis that we've done, and hopefully um, helped you guys out and girls um, out there who are tuning in and hopefully looking for a, a few little tidbits um, and hints. Is but that the so word just of the day? It is. I've just I just rolled with it again because <laughs> you reminded me tidbits. That's a good, it's a good, good word. But uh, just a reminder also about our Patreon, of course, and most importantly, our tier three that features a cash league with $400 given to the winner come the end of the season, along with a Supercoach ring from Mm. Supercoach Championship Rings. And Liam, they also get a guest spot on our potty. Mm. So um, excited to talk to to the winner. Hopefully it's it's me. So we can just talk to me. (laughs) (laughs) Imagine that. I'm just talking to you. Be a bit of a letdown for everybody else. Oh, presenting you with a, a, a bloody championship ring from Subico Championship Rings, and yeah, and I'd want yeah. to like be presented it in person as well. Like, you know, if that happens, I'm going to make you, you present kneel it to before yourself. me. Yeah, you're going to have to present it to yourself <laughs> and interview yourself, and I'll just sit back and just be like mm, taking notes. <laughs> yep, but right. um, yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> we have had a couple new uh, members sign up since last mm. week, uh, which is the truth. Uh, which we are super hyped about. <laughs> oh, I guess, no, because when I when I hear th- <laughs> when I hear these things, when I hear people say, <laughs> gone off the rails, we've gone off. I don't know. My mind has gone to mush. <laughs> when I, when, uh, every time I say this, I'm just, I'm just imagining. Listening to like another podcast saying this, I'm thinking, yeah, right. Like, sure thing. Like, a couple more people have signed up, but again, <laughs> it is the truth. <laughs> We're not just using it as a way to be like, sign up quick. But no, it is the truth. You can have a look at Patreon and see the numbers. <laughs> oh, I've lost my marbles. Apologies, ladies and gentlemen, but um, I'm crying. You got me crying, Liam. Uh, so, yes, we've had a couple more people sign up. And uh, we actually, and the reason I'm saying this is because we're, we're super hyped about this because, you know, last year we, we tried to get the league up and running and uh, we're incredibly mm. grateful, of course, outside of this for any support you can give. But uh, we do actually need one more person to sign up to give us the minimum numbers for fully fledged league. I mean, regardless, we're going to be doing it um, unofficially outside of Supercoach, if that's the case. Um, so it's a bit of a, a bit of a, 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 not a, not a plea, but to asking people, if you want to get involved, now's the time to do it because... Um, you'll be helping us uh, start our first league cash league for the, uh, for any, in, in our existence. But um, mm. we'd love for more to join us. So if you're keen to sign up and sweep the prize pool, get amongst it. Don't leave it too late. Spots are limited. Of course, there are a few spots remaining, of course, as I, uh, as I just alluded to, but uh, it is the truth, Liam. It is the truth. <laughs> 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 yeah. And, sorry. And for, for those that, <laughs> for the, <laughs> just snorted i'm sorry oh my god this and, yeah. and this is the reason why the episodes go for about an hour and a half because we just we just <laughs> lose lose our minds collectively and we lose our shit at each other yeah and okay for those in the league um you know that that don't win the major prize they come second to whatever um you'll go in the running to win an exclusive super coach edge prize mm. which will be an exclusive bit of merch which will uh yeah. but we'll announce a bit more about that soon yeah. um to find out more and to join our patreon head to www.patreon.com forward slash supercoach hang on <laughs> i'll, I'll <laughs> pick it up Liam. <laughs> to find out more and join our patreon <laughs> Don't worry about Liam, folks. <laughs> Head to patreon.com forward slash supercoachedge. And that is the tagline for this episode. That is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> we only speak the you truth. Can verify, you can verify how many how many Patreons there are as well. Yeah. Don't just don't just take Damon's word for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> don't take our word for it. We may be lying to try and trick you into joining our league. We speak the truth. But um <laughs> 
It's probably a good time to wrap up the show, Liam. I think we're uh, quite delirious. I, I, I hope those of you out there listening and tuning into YouTube are enjoying our banter um, throughout the preseason so far. And it will continue uh, far and long into the season. So uh, <laughs> strap yourselves in for more of that um, craziness. But uh, that does bring us to the end of the show. So it uh, looks like, Liam, we have a week off from footy before the start of round one. But of course, we'll be back next week with a mm. bit more analysis, a bit more uh, research. and a, Maybe we can a do a bit of a team uh, reveal. Oh, that's a good idea. Mm. Good idea. Indeed. So um, yeah, tune in for that. And uh, we will be posting as well. I was going to say it was going to be on this episode, but uh, we'll post far and wide the uh, the group, uh, yeah. group code for our um, our group. I don't know what you call it. I always get confused. Group, group. group leagues, whatever. Yeah, this the group, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, the group the group code. We'll put that out across our socials as well. So look out for that and, um, and make sure to join. And um, we'll uh, hopefully see you in then. But uh, until next week, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, we'll catch you next week uh, with some... It's some good news about rookies, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, catch you then.